much fun. But in order for this to make sense, I actually need to take a minute and remind you what we learned a few weeks ago. Because we learned a few weeks ago that there was a moment in time when God looked at the angels and he said, you know what I'm going to do today? I am going to create an entire universe and I'm going to start it all off by creating a planet called Earth. Look at what the Bible says about that in Genesis 1.1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But the way that God made the earth was very interesting. Because when God was creating our planet, he gave the earth three very defining characteristics. He gave us a sky, he gave us land, and he gave us water. Look at what the Bible says about that in Genesis 1-9. It says, then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into one place and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. So scripture tells us that as God was making the earth, what he did was he separated the sky, the land, and the water. He put all the water into one location and he called that place the sea or the ocean. But on the fifth day of creation, God did something completely different. Because on the fifth day of creation, God decided to create the first living things. And the first living things that God created weren't people. The first living things that God created were animals. Look at what the Bible says about that in Genesis 1.20. It says, then God said, let the water be filled with living creatures and let birds fly across the sky. Now this was over the top because the Bible tells us that on the fifth day, God made every creature that lives in water. I mean, he made sharks and fish and turtles, but he also created every type of bird that you could imagine. Because God created parrots and penguins. He created owls and eagles. But there's a problem. You see, when we think about how God created the earth, there's something that seems to be missing. There's something that just doesn't seem right. Let me explain what I'm talking about. I told you that when God created the earth, he gave our planet three very defining characteristics. Because God gave us water, and then he made all kinds of creatures to fill that water. God gave us a sky, and then he made all kinds of birds to fill the sky. But the other feature that God gave our planet was the land. So why haven't we heard about God creating any animals that live on dry ground. Well, the reason we haven't learned about any of those animals is because we haven't heard what God did on the sixth day. Because on the sixth day, God created three very specific types of animals. Look at what the Bible says in Genesis 124. It says, And God said, let the land produce living creatures. And you, go, you can't blow past that. One of the things I tell everybody is, look, don't just read your Bible. Read it slow because every word matters. Scripture says, and God said, let the land produce living creatures. It was almost like God looked at the dirt and said, you know what I want you to do? You're going to start coming up. And what I'm going to do is this dirt comes up, I'm going to start shaping you and forming you. And as you come up, as I shape and form you, what you're going to create is all different types of animals. And the first type of animal that God created were the livestock. That's why the Bible says, let the land produce living creatures, the livestock. So the Bible tells us that the first type of animal that God created was the livestock. So he made animals like goats and camels. He made horses and buffalo. But as God was creating all these different types of livestock, he gave some of them the ability to do things that most of us could never even imagine. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. 
One of the most well-known livestock in America is the Holstein cow. And we recognize these animals by the black and white markings all over their body. But one of the fascinating things about these animals is God gave them the ability to produce something that all of us love. These animals produce milk. Lots of it. In fact, the average Holstein cow produces over 2,000 gallons of milk every single year. And do you know why that's so important for all of us to understand? It's important because the reason you get to enjoy things like cereal and the reason you get to enjoy drinks like chocolate milk is because of the way that God designed these animals. That's how much God loves you. But you know, livestock weren't the only, I mean, cows weren't the only livestock that God created. Because he also made animals like llama. And llama are totally different than cows. Because when God was creating the llama, he gave them a very special character trait. God made llamas really protective of other animals. You see, whenever a farmer wants to protect his sheep, what he'll do is he'll take a couple llama and he'll put them in the same field as a bunch of sheep. And the reason the farmer does that is because if a wolf or a coyote comes into that field to steal one of those sheep, grab, drag them away and eat them, the llama will see the danger. They will chase that sheep or that coyote away so that none of the animals get harmed. And you need to remember, livestock weren't the only animals that God created on the sixth day. Look at what the Bible says in 124. It says, And God said, Let the land produce living creatures, the livestock, creatures that move along the ground. Now, of all the animals that God made, the creatures that move along the ground are the ones that most people are afraid of. Because there are an enormous amount of men and there are an enormous amount of women who are afraid of creatures like spiders and scorpions. They're afraid of rodents and reptiles. But you need to know this. This is really important. All the creatures that move along the ground aren't scary. Some of them are really helpful. Take snakes, for example. Right? A lot of people like me are really afraid of snakes. Okay? Matter of fact, a few weeks ago, did you see that snake that was probably like as long as the building and it was in the hallway? Right? And I saw it and I'm like, I am scared. So when I saw it, I literally turned around like a junior high girl and I ran down the hallway. Because I'm, I don't like them at all. Right? Because here's the thing. The reason most of us are afraid of snakes is because here's what we think. We think that one day we're going to walk through the woods and an anaconda is going to jump out of a tree. It's going to drag us away and it's going to eat us. But that isn't true because snakes don't eat people. The majority of snakes eat rodents like mice and rats. And when a snake eats a mouse or a rat, it actually helps us. And do you know how? It's because mice and rats love to eat corn and grain and nuts. And when they eat that, mice and rats actually spread disease to that food, which can affect us. So, whenever a snake eats a mouse or a rat, it helps us by eliminating the rodents that spread disease. And you need to know. Snakes aren't the only creatures that move along the ground. Because God also created animals like the alligator. And the alligator is totally different than the snake. Right? Because snakes just eat mice and rats. Alligators eat everything that you can imagine. I mean, they eat fish and turtle and deer and cattle and wildebeest and elk. But alligators also eat fruit. They eat things like wild grapes and tangerines. In fact, a few years ago, a farmer in Florida looked out his window and he saw an alligator eating mangoes 
right off of his tree. Right? But alligators don't just eat a lot of food. They also make a lot of noise. Alligators are really vocal animals. What happens is, is when there's a couple alligators in a lake or a river, what they'll do is they'll make sounds to communicate to each other. But they also make a really loud sound when they feel like they're in danger. Because whenever an alligator feels like they're being threatened, what they'll do is they'll suck a bunch of air into their lungs. And then they blow it out. And when they blow it out, it makes this really deep sound like they're a dragon. But what they're doing is they're telling everyone around them, don't come any closer. I feel like you are threatening me. And if you come any closer, I'm going to come at you and you will not like the outcome. But this is such a cool sound that I actually want you to hear it for yourself. Watch this. Now, look at me. This is important. Look at me, all you kids. Don't ever touch an alligator, ever. You have no reason to because, look, they're not super friendly and they're not going to hurt you if you leave them alone. Now, look, and this is important. Even though alligators look and sound really scary, you know what most people don't know? Most people don't know that female alligators are really good moms. Because whenever a female alligator is about to give birth, what she'll do is she'll build a nest out of sticks, leaves, and mud. And what happens over time is those sticks and leaves start to decay. And when the sticks and leaves start to decay, it produces heat, which actually warms up the nest and keeps her eggs warm. And eventually, the baby alligators come out of their shell. And when they come out of their shell, what they do is they walk down to the shoreline and they get into the water because the second an alligator is born, they can swim. So what they do is they swim out to their mom and that mother will protect her baby alligators for over a year until they're old enough to go out on their own and be safe. So, look at me. Here's what we've learned so far. We've learned that on the sixth day, God created livestock and he created the creatures that move along the ground. But because there's a lot of information today, uh, we, we gotta, I, I want to play a quick game to help you remember this. So what I'm going to need is, I'm going to need two volunteers. I'm going to need one student volunteer and one adult volunteer. I need one student and one adult. And adults, I have no fear of picking you, so get your hand up. Okay. Um, yes, come up here with me. Okay, that's great. Stand right up here for a minute. And I need an adult. Give me an adult. Give me an, an, an very good. Yes, come with me. Yes. How are you? Come right up here. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, so, um, so real quick, uh, t tell me your name. Luke. Luke, and how old are you? Eight. Eight, and where do you go to school? Kirtland. Kirtland, okay, very good. And, and what sports do you play? Soccer. Soccer, very good. Do you guys have a good season? Yeah. Okay, good, good. And everything's at home okay? Your wife's all right? Okay, that's great. Okay, and your name, I already know, is, uh, is Fantasia, yes. And everything is good at home with you? If not, we will beat your husband and have no problem with that. Yes, that, that we have no issue. Yeah, that would be great. So listen, so um, what we actually have today is this. is um, Because there are so many animals that God created, what we're going to do is we're actually going to play a game. This is called the animal sound game. Okay? And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give both of you th these mics. You hold this mic for a minute. Okay? And you are going to hold uh, this mic for just a minute. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to give you a couple animal sounds that I want you to be able to, to kind of imitate. Okay? So um, the first, we're going to start off easy. What I want you to do is what sound do you think a, a dog makes? Like a barking sound. Okay, so what does the barking sound sound like? 
Rough. Okay, so that's what a dog would good. good. Okay, very good. Uh, now for you, what sound do you think um, a, a, um, a, a cat would make? Meow. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay, okay now, just for the second one, uh, this is a little bit tougher. What sound do you think um, a camel would make? And remember, even if you don't know, make it up. That's what we'll play today. Okay, what sound do you think, if you don't know, just make up a sound and that's what we'll say. Okay, so the camel's a smoker. Okay, that's good. All right. <laughs> Pull them all. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, what we're going to do is this. Uh, because there's so many animals that we have to remember, right, what we're going to do is this. Um, from this point forward, uh, whenever I say the, na- uh, the word livestock, um, you are going to help us remember what the livestock are. Because what I have here is I, I, have, I have a cow mask, okay? Because we remember that one of the livestock God made was the Holstein cow. So um, whenever I, from the, for the rest of the message, when I say the name or the word livestock, you're going to say, you're going to make a cow sound, and the cow would make the sound of? Moo. Okay, Move. Okay, very good. Good. All right. So uh, this is for you. Actually, you do me a favor. You need to sit right here in this first seat. Yep. And you need to hold this for a minute. Okay. Go ahead and sit there right there in that seat, and you can hold this mic. Okay. So remember, from this point forward, whenever um, – there you go. Okay. Now, for, for, for you, um, what we learned is, is we learned that the other thing God d- didn't just create was the livestock – the livestock. Move. Yeah. Uh, the, other, the other animals that God created were the creatures that move along the ground. And one of the creatures that move along the ground we learned about was a snake. So what I have here is I have some snake sunglasses, okay? So these are going to fit you perfect. Now, in order to get this right, you need to tell me what sound do you think a snake actually makes. Okay, very good, very good, very good. So, Luke, here's what you're going to do. For the rest of the message... When I say the phrase, creatures that move along the ground, you're going to say, very good. So grab a seat right there, and we're going to see if we don't fall down. That would be bad. you got to keep your sunglasses on, man. That doesn't work without them. Okay, all right, here, you hold this. Now remember, when I say those words. Okay, so everybody got it? So here's what we've learned. We learned that on the sixth day, God created the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, but he also made... He also made every wild animal. Look at what the Bible really says in Genesis 1.24. It says, and God said, let the land produce living creatures, the livestock, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals. Now look at me. This is crazy. Because the Bible tells us that God didn't just create cows and crickets. He made every wild animal that you could possibly think of. I mean, he made monkeys and mink. He made raccoons and rhino. But he also made a group of animals that most people don't think about. Because there are an enormous amount of people who've asked me over the years, Scott, does the Bible talk about dinosaurs? Yes, it does. And do you know how we know that? We know that because on the sixth day, the Bible makes it very clear that God made all the wild animals. Scripture doesn't tell us that God said, well, doesn't. he made the lion, then he made the leopard, then he made the mink. The Bible doesn't say that. What God did was he said, look, I'm going to make the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and I'm going to make all the wild animals. And the dinosaur was one of those animals. Now, one of the problems and one of the actual, the total mysteries that people have about dinosaurs is that most people think that dinosaurs were these huge creatures like 50 foot tall, and they ran around and they ate everything, but that's not the truth. Because most dinosaurs were no bigger than a horse. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. One of the most well-known dinosaurs in history was the Velociraptor. And most people think that this animal was huge. And the reason they think that is because they saw the movie Jurassic Park. Right? 
But the reality is the Velociraptor was actually a really small dinosaur. They were only about two feet tall and about five feet long. But even though they weren't very big, the Velociraptors were really fast. They could run over 40 miles an hour, which was really helpful when they were kind of chasing down their food. But of all the wild animals that God made, I actually have a favorite. My favorite wild animal of all time is the tiger. Now, here's the thing. I don't like house cats at all. But I love the tiger. And you know why I love the tiger so much? I love the tiger because I honestly think they're the most beautiful animals in the world. I mean, they have these amazing stripes all over their body. But you know what's so cool about their stripes? What's cool is their stripes aren't just on their fur. God designed a tiger's stripes to go all the way to their skin. In fact, a few years ago, what happened was there was a doctor who had to do a medical procedure on, on one of the tigers at the zoo. So what he did was he shaved some of their fur, and what you see is the markings on their skin match the stripes on their fur. And not only do their stripes match the markings on their skin, no two tigers have the exact same stripes. Just like a human fingerprint, every tiger has a different stripe pattern from every other tiger. And not only do they have really cool fur, these animals love to do something that all of us love to do. They love to swim. In fact, tigers have been known to swim across lakes and rivers. They love water so much that sometimes you'll see tigers just laying in a big body of water all day long just so they can stay cool. But I got to be honest with you about this. One of the reasons that tigers are my favorite animals is because I actually got to see one face to face. What happened was, a few years ago when my kids were real little, Vanessa and I took Madeline and Owen to a, a vacation in North Carolina. We went down there for like three or four days. And while we were there, I saw this article that talked about a zoo where you could pet a baby tiger. And I'm like, serious about that? So I, I look at my kids, I'm like, hey, would you guys like to pet a baby tiger? Like, yeah, we would. So we get in the car and we drive to the zoo. I'd never been there, right? The problem was when we got to the zoo, this guy said, well, um, we don't have any baby tigers, but what we do have is we have a tiger about, you know, 50, 60 pounds that, that you could pet. And I was like, well, what could go wrong? Just wild animal, right? Right? But here's what I didn't know. I didn't know that young tigers love to play rough. They will jump on you. They will bite you. They will scratch you. They'll jump on your head. They'll try to attack you. And the thing is, they're not being mean or trying to eat you. That's just the way that tigers play. They like to bite and jump and scratch. So they told us, they go, look, when you guys are in this room, if the tiger starts getting kind of aggressive, if he tries to bite you or he jump on you, or he's kind of keep scratching, you need to push him away. But they go, look, don't push him light. This is a tiger, not a kitty cat, right? If the tiger starts being kind of aggressive, just push him, push him away, get him away from you, right? So what the owners did was they took us and they put us in this little room, and then they brought this tiger in, right, on a dog leash. So apparently they could pull it off if he went nuts, right? So it was hilarious because the second this tiger comes in the room, my son Owen starts growling at it. Like, Rrr. I'm like, what are you doing, you idiot? This is a tiger. He's going to fight. Don't, don't make it mad, right? But it was so funny because this tiger chased my daughter. He tried to bite my son. In fact, this tiger kept scratching me, clawing me, and biting me so much that I got so annoyed. I had to shut, like, get, stop. I had to shove him away. And if I show you what happened, if I show you what happened on video, nobody can get mad at me. 
okay? I don't want one email, one text message. I don't want a phone call from PETA. If you're going to be upset, service is over. We'll pray for you as you go. Um, but but this, is, this is actually what happened. Watch this. Don't growl at it. <laughs> of all the amazing animals that God made for us on the sixth day. And next week, next week, we're going to look at a story in the Bible where we see God using all of these different kinds of animals to demonstrate his love for us. But before we close, uh, we actually have to finish our verse for the day, okay? Because we learn uh, that there were three types of animals that God created. He created the livestock, Ooh. the creatures that move along the ground, <laughs> But God also made all the wild animals. So what I need is I actually need one more volunteer. Good. Come up here. Very good. Come on up. Yep. Come on. Okay. Very good. So um, what we have is, hey, real quick, what's your name? Libby. Okay. You got to talk in the mic. Libby. Okay. You got to hold this, baby. Okay. So, so Libby, and how old are you? Nine. Nine. And where do you go to school? Hopkins. Hopkins. Very good. Okay. And so what we have for you is this. Um, <laughs> we, have, we have this tiger mask. So from now on, whenever I say the wild animals, what you have to do is you have to make your best tiger sound. So what is your best tiger sound? <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. Right, here we go. All right. So you guys going to stand right there. All right. Now. Okay. So look. Here's, there's actually a verse that you got to learn today because it's not good to hear information until we learn, right? So here's the verse. It says this. It says, and God said, let the land, I'm going to just, you got to watch me do this. It says, and God said, let the land produce living creatures, the livestock. And we're all going to go, moo. The creatures that move along on the ground, and you got to move like a snake. And the wild animals, and you got to make your best tiger roar. Okay, everybody got it? Okay, so we're all going to stand up. We're going to learn this verse together. Okay. All right. Ready? Stretch out a little bit. Come on, it's going to be good. Ready? It says, and God said, let the land produce living creatures, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals. Okay, one more time. Ready? And God said, let the land produce living creatures, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals. Good. Stay standing. Let me pray for us. God, first off, thanks so much for what you told us that you created. Because the truth is, we love animals. We love seeing them jump and swim and play. We, we like our dogs. We like our cats. We like our goldfish. And the reason we have all these amazing things that are so important to us is because it's one of the things that you did to show us how much you care about each and every person. So God, thank you for what we get to see and experience. And Lord, my hope is this. My hope for every one of us from this point forward is that every time we see an animal of any kind, it will be a vivid reminder. That's how much, that's how much God loves me. Lord, thank you for the chance to God to be here this morning. It's in Jesus' name, amen.